Hey guys, what's going on? Dr. Mike here, the mad Russian scientist of metal. <laughs> Just moved into this new space in the middle of lockdown. I haven't had a bloody haircut for months now. And you can see it's all mess uh, <laughs> at the front, which you can't see, and at the back, which you do see. And uh, I'm just in the middle of uh, setting up this new space. But while my head is fresh, I just wanted to share something that I think will be really valuable for you. And that is setting up the listening position and room acoustics, room treatment for your existing space or new space. I'll try to keep this as simple as I can so that uh, if you don't have any background in uh, science or physics or whatever, you could understand and follow what I'm doing well. And I just wanted to show you how I was uh, treating my hair for three days straight, being absolutely unhappy with how the room sounds, and then bang, I made some fine adjustments. Literally, I moved my speakers five or ten centimeters back and treated the back wall a bit better, and there you go, it sounds much better already, and now I just need to finalize and fine-tune the position. So, I just wanted to share this with you, and hopefully you can apply it to your setup as well. Now, when I start with a space from scratch, I want to assess how the room sounds by itself. Is it boxy? Is it uh, fluttery and echoey? Is it too large? Is it too small? And to do so, I go into the middle of the room, and then I start clapping and moving forward and then backwards and listen how that flutter of my clap uh, travels through the room. I listen to the reflections, I listen to the low end as well, and I try to find the most balanced position across the whole thing. In order to support those findings with scientific calculations, there is this website called noaudiofile.com, it's free, please use it. And there is a speaker placement calculator. If you Google it, you will find it. If you input your measurements of the room, it will spit out a few options for you as initial uh, listening positions. And then there's this 38% option where your listening position is at 38%. And then there is this much space for the speakers from the front wall. And then there are a few others as well. They say that you would like to avoid sitting right next to your wall behind you as much as possible. They say five inches from that wall to your speakers. Reason being, here's the go, and this is important, please check it out. Speaker, your monitor. It sends sound both to the front and to the back. It sends sound to the front, this is your listening position, you hear it. it sends sound to the back though, that sound reflects from this wall and travels back to you at a shifted phase. So there is a phase shift happening because there is a delay in time. And then it travels back and it interacts with the main sound wave which you're hearing. And that causes you to not hear the low end properly. Mainly this problem lies within the low end because, if you have a look, these are your sonic waves of different frequency. Higher frequency have shorter wavelength and then lower frequency have larger wavelengths. And these low end waves carry much more sonic energy. And for that reason, they are harder to stop and they interact with low-end frequency in a much worse way. So low-end, therefore, is the main problem. This is also an explanation to why acoustic foam panels don't quite work with the low-end. I'm talking about this kind of panels, the triangular ones. These do nothing below, uh, don't want to lie, but I would say 800 hertz, to say the least. Everything below, so your beloved 100 hertz, is completely unaffected by those small triangular panels because they cannot stop this incredibly huge low-end energy. Therefore, you need more significant treatment, and I'll show you uh, what we're talking about a bit later. But going back to the speaker placement, they recommend moving your loudspeaker at least five inches from the back wall here, at least, so that the wavelength that is reflected from the wall is sitting a bit higher, so maybe at 200 hertz, not at 60 hertz, which is just unstoppable. And then if your back wall has some kind of absorption properties, can stop that, you will be much better off with that. Now, having said all that, I want to share some of the real-life experience of me treating this exact room and following this exact guide and finding some really interesting things that I 
thought would not be correct simply based on all this information. And I'll tell you what I've done in order to make the best uh, out of this room, so far at least. So, my process was uh, exactly as I described here. I went into the speaker placement calculator, spit out this 38% uh, option. Uh, I tried it. First and foremost, I just had a bit of a listen and that sounded weird. Low end was completely off, completely dipped out. I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear any kicks. I was listening to Demon Factory by Fear Factory. Good album to check the low end, it's balanced. And then I thought, well, what the hell is going on? I don't want to continue with that. And so I, I used that 29% option as well, and a bit of the same thing happened. So I decided to try putting my speakers closer to the back wall. Reason being, in my previous space, I had some panels serving as absorbers for my back wall, and they worked really well. In that regard. So I, I thought, well, if this doesn't make much sense, it should be doing something to me. I went ahead and uh, I used this Room EQ Wizard free software alongside with a measurement microphone. I highly recommend getting one. It's cheap. This kind of thing. You have this microphone, you set it up pretty much on your listening position, and by using uh, Room EQ Wizard software, this one here, you can simply measure your room via sweeps. There you go. Here's your measurement. You can do a series of measurements, which I recommend doing. Move your speakers uh, forward and backward. See where your dips are the least pronounced. When I placed my speakers closer to what the software has recommended me, the calculator, I received this kind of result. And to me it is quite bloody horrific, because if we're looking at this area here, 115 hertz region is completely nulled out, and then there is a resonance at 90, there's another dip at 70, similar to this one, and then there is a resonance at 140. So if I'm trying to mix low end, if I'm trying to mix kicks um, and bass, for instance, this would completely, absolutely ruin everything that I'm doing. So I was literally tearing my hair apart, thinking, what the hell am I going to do with this room? But then I started experimenting with different positions. You have to keep in mind that this is super sensitive. Five centimeters forward or backward make a lot of difference. When I moved my monitors literally 15 centimeters closer to that back wall, contradictory to what is recommended in that guide with five inches rule, have a look what 15 centimeters did to my measurements. This is before, this is after. So this dip is half gone now. Now this dip is worse indeed, but 160 is definitely better uh, than 113. I went ahead and fine-tuned this as well a lot. This is without as much acoustic treatment as I had, but just for your information, moving speakers for 5, 10, 15 centimeters forward or backward to your wall, uh, considering you have some panels, can make wonders happen. Now, this is, as I said, this is not treated very well. This is finding your initial listening position. When you introduce more acoustic treatment into the corners and into the sides, it will help to smooth out that low-end response. It will help to make it more even. As simple as moving your speakers forward or backward will help a lot, both based on uh, how sound is reflected from the back wall, as well as how the sound travels and resonates with the room, uh, so-called room modes. So maybe get the measurement mic and try to measure your room and see if there are positions that actually are much better suited to you. Now, let's talk quickly about the acoustic treatment. This is a very useful resource. Arken.com, Acoustics 101, highly recommended. If we look at this picture here, what is important is to treat the first reflection points. Based on the same principle as I discussed before, the sonic wave 
travels in all directions and then is getting reflected. And when it is reflected, travels back to you as a listener. That cancels the, uh, the main signal and causes problems, those dips and peaks that I showed before. So treating the reflection points, say, this sound travels to you as well as here. And then if it does reflect, it travels back to you, bounces back to you in a wrong phase. But if you have some absorption at these reflection points, it won't reflect as much. And hopefully it will not interfere with this. Same with the corners. Corners accumulate the low end. And so the low end that travels into the corners causes resonances. So treating those corners with a significant amount of absorption helps a lot as well. Similarly, the back wall here to not let the sound bounce off for you. And I can show you all the measurements that I've done. Yeah, you can see how many measurements I've done. I literally did it for three days straight. This is position one with my other set of speakers and that was the most horrific experience as I said before, when I only started and I followed that calculator, this is what I got. This is just incredible deep. And then see how much this deep has disappeared here when I moved the speakers closer to that wall. So yeah, by following those measurements and by carefully moving speakers forward and backward and just measuring, 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 I was able to find the most balanced position. It's still not incredible. And let me quickly just show you what kind of acoustic treatment I got here, for now at least. This is uh, my listening position here. You can see that I have a window which has to be obviously treated so that the sound does not reflect from that glass. So there are two panels here. Uh, symmetrically, I got these two here as well. Now, this whole area I treated really, 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 really hard so that almost nothing can get reflected from that surface. I haven't built the panels yet, obviously, but this is in the works. And, and then there are large base traps in the corners as well. And so that seems to treat this area of the room quite well. Ceiling hasn't been treated yet, but it will be in the works. I definitely need to treat this area here and this area here as well. I know what to do with it now. Yeah, I guess that's um, how I have approached this room and hopefully this helps with your travels as well. For the materials that I use, just earth wool suitable for sound with uh, R number. Yeah, there is a special number, R number. Uh, I'm using 4.1. Uh, I used to use 3.1 with good results as well. There are debates and battles about which uh, sound absorption material to use and what's better, what's worse, but to be honest, to be completely honest with you, with uh, us working at home studios, I think that the amount of treatment and its positioning and the listening positioning is far more important than the quality of this material itself. Just don't use those foam panels because they do nothing. Use this thick and annoying earth wool or rock wool or whatever you call it. This one is safe, safe to breathe with, safe to use. It's just, it is a little bit itchy but don't use the glass one because they are dangerous. And th this can be really cost efficient. You can get two large packs of this material for $200 and then just construct those wooden panels or wh whatever your creativity may get you with and be done with it and be good with your room and have fun producing, recording and mixing. Um, hope this is helpful. This is just... Uh, a video in the middle of uh, setting up a new space. You can see that how messy it is. Uh, gear is missing, cables laying around my labeler, which uh, has been the, the best so far. But yeah, I'll do a proper update uh, when I can and on that. Hopefully this was useful. Cheers and rock on.